Welcome to the Freedom Hustles podcast, where host John and Andy take you on a journey of liberation away from the nine to five grind. Explore side hustles, remote work, and the skills to help you unlock true freedom. Brought to you by freedomskillsacademy.com, this podcast is your gateway to independence and financial empowerment. Okay, so there we go again. Welcome to episode 70, um, Freedom Hustle podcast. So you just wrote a post. Um, good evening, Andy, by the way. Evening, John. You all right? Yeah, uh, yep. So good. So you just wrote a post which we, we just recently published over on the blog and um, various other various other mediums, medium being one of them. Um, and it was called, Is Honesty the Best Policy? So as you wrote the post, um, I'm going to let you kickstart off this okay. episode. Right. So <clears throat> I saw it this morning on Facebook. Someone asked the question, when is honesty not the best policy? <clears throat> I don't know if they were talking about work, uh, business, or in general, because there was no um, context for it any or either. It was just an open question. Uh, and someone had written and said, never. Um, it's all about ethics. And I thought long and hard about that. And it's uh, basically, uh, you, firstly, you can't be honest all the time or every time. You obviously seen that seen that film, Liar Liar. It's incredibly difficult to be honest. Mm. It's also incredibly dangerous. And um, they said never. Um, it's all about ethics. And I thought, to be fair, honesty has nothing to do with ethics in the first place. Well, we'll get around to business in a minute. Mm. But um, as far as ethics is concerned. <clears throat> Honesty is not always the best policy because, I mean, and I don't think, no disrespect to these people who said, because someone else said, I agree with that person, uh, honesty is always the best policy. And I'm thinking, well, I bet you've I bet you've lied in your life before. You could, There's always going to be a time where you've told a little white lie. And this person said, even if you say a little white lie, it's not, it's not right. And I'm thinking, if you're just walking down the street and you see uh, a gay person or a, a person who's a different colour being chased by a load of skinheads with weapons and they're going to basically kick seven bells of out of this person and that person disappears and hides behind a dumpster down an alleyway and they've lost him and they stop and say to you did you see that person <clears throat> which way did they go are you going to be honest or are you going to lie even the Dalai Lama himself, who is the head of uh, Tibetan Buddhism, and in Buddhism, the whole per the whole premise around Buddhism is to be sort of honest and truthful as much as you can. But even he himself said there are times where lying is actually better than not lying. It's mm. better than honesty. Mm. So to me, to, for these people to turn around and say, um, oh, yes, you should never lie and blah, blah, blah. And it's, I don't know if they were thinking about business or if they were thinking of what context we're in, but I'm thinking... <clears throat> I can guarantee that you are going to lie sometime in possibly this week. Parents do it to children all the time. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, sometimes the white lies can be... They, there's a there's a, a copywriter who talks about marketing, and I love his the way he looks at everything. And basically, all of marketing, even Seth Godin... In fact, I've got his book here. Let's have a look. Hold this up to the camera. Seth Godin, all marketers are liars. The are liars is crossed out. It says, tell stories. And uh, this copywriter always basically says that with sales letters, when you are writing a sales letter, even if it's based on your evidence and your fact, but if you're, if you're writing a sales letter that is projecting a potential future for the reader and it's making them feel that there's an achievable outcome, until it actually happens, it's a lie. <clears throat> because the definition of truth is something, it's the definition of honesty or truth is something that is real. If it's not real, and it's pretend it's a lie. Yeah. And and I, and I just saw you know this 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 concept this idea they were saying oh you've always got to be honest this and the other and it's like I'm not even sure if they understand truly what the the idea of honesty and lying or what is mm. the, this this there's this notion isn't there? this idea we've been taught by parents we've been taught by teachers lying is bad honesty is good and the majority of the time they all lie to us anyway and they weren't bad lies particularly but. This idea that lying is bad, people are afraid to admit that they they will lie because mm. they don't believe or they haven't thought about it. But actually, I say lying is often life saving. Yeah, yeah, it's especially in yeah, like you say that little example you mentioned then. But I mean, yeah, that's sort of bring it back to 
kind of like the online world then and the sort of business or online businesses you know like we're talking about but you know sales letters i guess you know i, I used to get really annoyed with sales letters um when i first started out you know because i would read them and i would think to myself how can they put that as a headline do you know what i mean because <laughs> it clearly you know it was some whatever some ridiculous claim mm -hmm. you know like you know, make 10 grand a weekend or something while doing 20 minutes work from your Mac, from your laptop or whatever. I don't know whatever the statement was. And um, the other one I used to hate was, you know, copy and paste or not copy and paste, but, you know, like if you can click a mouse or something, then you can do this, you know. And it was these sort of like bold statements, which – once you learn sort of copywriting and everything like that, you learn to sort of accept them for what they are and, you know, but yeah. <clears throat> I always used to think that alongside, you know, politicians, copywriters also tend to get away with it a fair bit. Um, and I know, like, you know, your sort of expertise and your field is copywriting, but um, there is a bit of an mm. art form to it and there is a bit of a, but mm. I would say there is still that kind of grey area and there is still that sort of like yep. fine line, isn't there, where you can't, you know, you, you've got to be careful not to sort of cross that. I think once you sort of, you stay within the boundaries and, you know, as Seth points out, you know, if you tell stories um, and potential is always, a, there's always the potential word in there, isn't there? <laughs> Just because someone can do it doesn't mean everyone can do it yeah. um but then that's exactly the same for everything isn't it you know what i mean so it is yeah it is a bit of a tricky one yeah <clears throat> well people don't see copywriting uh, some people do some people see it all lies and some people don't the fact is because you're using stories um and you're basically you're leading somebody to a belief it's kind of accepted because it, back in the head they think well it could happen or it can't happen so they're not being blatantly lied to. They're not like, um, you know, someone who's come into your house and, and mm. scammed you out of your, your savings by lying to your face. Yeah. But I do love the premise. I love the idea. And that is basically that you're, as a copywriter, you're, 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 you're pulling somebody to have this belief and this idea. But a belief and idea, <clears throat> until it's actually factually happened, is still a lie because you're creating a fabricated... Um, world which isn't real and it's like drama tv watching tar drama or film if it's you, you're watching a film we know that it's like this is there's a gray area because obviously it's fantasy it's fiction it's story but basically if something is real then that's truth if something isn't real then it's a lie so mm. every drama every program that you watch we watch for entertainment we can accept it it's all for entertainment but the, these people, these actors are lying to us because they're not the characters, they're not the storylines. None of it is real, so it's all a lie. But we know it's a lie because it's a fictional story. We know that. And um, it was interesting because some of these people here who were saying that they're all about being honesty and <clears throat> honest in business, these are high-ticket affiliate marketers who all their posts are talking about, you know, you can make 10 grand a month doing this. Yeah, they and... probably have. They probably have themselves. And if they report their story as in, I made 10 grand this month, then that's true. Then that's honesty. If they say it's possible for you, it is possible. But at the same time, you don't know what that person is. You don't know what the outcome is. It's projection into the future. And if it's a projection into the future, it's not happened. So then technically, it is a lie. Yeah. And it's a little grey area, but it was just so funny. See, I, I do believe that when it comes to business, you have to be sort of transparent and you, and you don't lie because we know full well that if you're going to sell a product to someone and you're saying it's going to work, but it doesn't work and you know it doesn't work, then they, it's illegal. It's fraudulent. Um, you know, if you say, if you start making claims saying that you can make 10 grand a month knowing full well that people can't, that is an out and out fraudulent claim. That is a lie. That is illegal. Yes. Those are, I think that's what people sort of differentiate that, you know, that's an out, that's a down and out lie. The rest is, oh, it's just a, it's a possibility. It's a potential, it's a wannabe. But mm. at the same time, technically, and this, like I said, this copywriter talks about it all the time because he talks a lot about um, propaganda, motivate, uh, um, inspiration, uh, motivating people, manipulating people. It's all very, very fascinating. But it's like he says, you get, you get a person to believe that something is possible. 
But if it hasn't actually happened and it's not real, then it is still a lie. And it was like, and there's these people trying to say, oh, yeah, I'm honest all the time. And it's like, well, you can't be. No human can be honest every minute of the day. No, no, no. There are so I'm many. Like you say, yeah. those people are in the high affiliate, higher ticket affiliate game, you know, they're, they're going to have some big numbers. They're going to be throwing about some big numbers on their, you know, social media profiles and all that. And, you know, I see it all the time. Like I've mentioned it loads of times on air. I hate with a passion when I see the, when I see the posts where there's be like someone just sort of sitting around doing nothing. And then they'll say, Oh, I can afford to take a day off today because I earn passive income from my from digital marketing or some complete BS like that. And you think, well, you'd not that's not true. But you know, maybe maybe you made one sale. Great, well done. Um, but you know, that's not the reason why you're sitting around in the garden. You know, you're literally you're purely it's purely content and I don't agree with any of this this other little thing, which I've, I'm hoping has died off now. But there was a big phase years ago, wasn't there, that went around, which was like fake it till you make it, and um, mm -hmm. you know that you would have marketers that would encourage their students and their you know people that were taking their courses and that to go out and almost well basically lie and just say, oh, I've already made three and a half grand this month, and you know. Just use a screenshot from someone else, and no one's going to care. You know, mm -hmm. fake it, and and I, you get that. There's so much of that on TikTok still. You know, I've I've heard stories of people renting Lamborghinis and things like that just for the post. You know, they'll stand, <clears> and, <throat> oh yeah, my course or this week's trading made me twelve and a half grand. You know, yeah. so I went out and bought myself a new Lambo, and you're like, do people fall for that? Do people believe that absolute garbage? But obviously they do, otherwise they wouldn't keep doing it. And you just think, you know, Jesus Christ, I am much more on the on the side. And we would always encourage everyone to be a bit more like this. And that is document the journey rather than the, the fake it till you make it thing is, I, I just think it's horrendous. And I think eventually mm -hmm. people see through it and they eventually they will call you out on it. But document the journey, you know what I mean? No one, more people relate to that a lot more. People will relate to somebody that maybe wants to give something a go and wants to try something and gives their honest opinion on something. Yeah, you know I mean, if you're going to start putting yourself out there on social media or whatever, um, <clears throat> document the journey and and that, uh, like you say, people would love to see that growth. Um, you're uh. always going to get people try and knock you down. That's part of life. You're always going to get people try and you know knock you off your pedestal once you start doing well you're going to start getting haters everything like that that's just part of the game yeah um so much better ride that wave once you've actually got some real experience rather than just come straight out of the blocks lying about it and then get you know knocked off and you know stuff like that so yeah. uh, it's a it's a fine line because success often comes from authority and positioning yourself and I've seen many people who have become successful by not necessarily faking it to you making it, but they position themselves. I mean, <clears throat> it's kind of one of those, I don't, I don't believe lying is particularly bad. So I, I don't feel bad saying this and that is through sales letters. I can lie, but it depends on how you perceive lying. It's not necessarily I'm lying to outright lying to get people. It's just like, like I said, when you write a story and you're perceiving or uh, projecting a future yeah. until it's happened, it's fiction and fiction isn't truth. So yeah. if it's not truth, it's a lie. It's not, a, it's not a bad thing. You take the strength away from the word lying by understanding what, what, you know, what I mean in that respect. But um, I do know what you were saying there about people renting Lamborghinis and stuff like that did happen a lot, but there's also sort of positioning. It's like branding. Now you can, the prime example I'm going to say is I used to work for a guy who went and parked his cars in front of, it was actually a hotel. It was an estate, a stately home. That was now a hotel. It was a golf course, stately home, your neck of the woods. And he parked his cars in front of there and he was stood in front of his cars in front of this stately home. And it was on a, he was on a sales letter. He never said it was his home. Yeah, People no. look at it and think it was his, mm. but his home was on, even though he was wealthy 
as you'll probably understand, down in that area of the, of the neck of the woods. Mm. It, you, you have to be really, really minted to get like a big estate. So his house was was on a road. And so they're getting a photograph of him stood outside his car, you know, out, front, out front of his own house, in front of yeah. yellow lines, wanting to look the part. No. <laughs> so he was placing, he was making making it look more, making it look the part mm. by having this photograph taken. The cars were his and it was, he never said that it was his house, but it set the scene and that is like setting the scene. Yeah. It's always, it's like buying a brand new house. People go in there and set the house for you to walk around because people don't tend to have the imagination. They can't see what you do with the house when it's empty until you start putting sofas in and whatever. And they go, oh, I think I could have that there and that there. So picturing and setting the scene isn't necessarily a bad thing. However, if you break it down to its really basic what it is, it's not truth. If it's not real, it's not truth. Then technically it is a lie. But yeah. uh, <clears throat> but yes, I mean, like I say, I don't necessarily have a, I don't have this overly negative. I, I battled for years with this idea of being, you know, you've got to be honest, you've got to be truthful. Folly, Buddhism, it's been said to us by our peers and, you know, teachers and whatever. And over the years, I've come to this realisation that one, everybody lies. Two, it's not always a bad thing. And three, you know, it's just, it's part of nature. Sometimes lying can be really good. But as I say, when it comes to sort of business, when it comes to any claims that you're making, I mean, the ridiculous thing is, there's a, what is it called hyperboil? Hyperboil is where uh, <clears throat> you over-exaggerate the claim to the point that it's ridiculous. So in your head, you know it's ridiculous. Mm. And so it's actually, you accept it in a fun way. So like you said earlier, you know, if you you make, if I said to you, I make 20 grand in uh, in in a week, People go, oh, that's, that's very acceptable. But if I came to you and said, like, I made a, a, a million pounds in a weekend, <clears throat> you'd be like, yeah, right, really, as if. And I'd be like, yeah. And I only did two hours work and I was eating my undercrackers. And it, it gets that ridiculous that it becomes, the lie actually becomes comical mm. uh, and less damaging. But it's, uh, yeah, it's just, it just really, really tickled me today. How all these people were sort of so completely against lying, yet they were just unable to realize that. You know, by you can tell people that they may make money, they may be able to make this, and they may be able to make that, and potentially it is possible, it is achievable, but at the same time, until they actually do it, you're just sharing fiction, which is a lie. But then I think that, you know, I, I yeah, a couple of points. I know you mentioned about the guy who stood in front of the um, stately home, and that I think that, yeah. I, <laughs> We've got one of our sales hours, I think, is me stood in front of a cruise ship. So, <laughs> um, but is, even so, it was genuine, you know, what I mean, I didn't hire the cruise ship, and it wasn't like you didn't, you didn't oh, hire I the didn't cruise ship, walk up on the docks and go, Look, there's a cruise ship, let's take some pictures. I was actually on that cruise, so that is fine. <clears throat> and I'd also point out the fact that the product that you the sales letter is for a product which you did earn the money. To pay for that cruise, exactly. Uh, that, the work through that, the way the the way that cruise was paid for was how was was basically that product. Yeah, but not not the sales of that product. The method in that product is yeah. how I paid for that cruise. Yeah, so yeah, it was quite that's, all that, fitting, that's, really. that's yeah. factual. But at the same time, as you say, you are setting the scene. Because yeah, you know, yeah, if you you you're not going to get many sales if you put a sales letter. Well, that's, unless, that's what I was thinking. Like, you know, yeah, stood out. You, if you you out. sat on a canoe and a canal or something. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, don't know. And then, so going back then, um, I think like, going back to like sales letters and that, and you know, like say we're fine with it now because, like you say, we've read so many and we've written so many, and well, not so much me, but you've written so many, and um, but I understand the construction a bit more, and I understand the way that they're designed now, and that is that you know, potential earnings is fine. It is fine to say that, and it is fine to quote that, and because, like you said, you can't. This cannot be applicable you know you, you don't know number one you don't know who's going to buy it there could be a thousand people that buy that and every single one of them is completely different they're going yeah, to yeah. approach this completely differently even if the product is literally do this click here push that button you know even if it is so precise they're still going to do it differently 
and there's still going to be other factors involved. You know, there is no product in the world, as we've said before, where it is, you know, do A and B and then you'll get mm. C. It just isn't going to work like that. Um, there has to be a little bit of user interpretation always. And there obviously has to be a, a, a work ethic and, you know, a drive and determination, which again is completely different for every single every single person. So on the sales there, I, I, it's absolutely fine to put potential. You know, this is what you could earn. This is what has been earned before. This mm -hmm. is what, say like, you know, in our cases, we usually we'll always build products around real stuff that we've done. Yeah. So we're not going to just make stuff up. So in you know, the courses the, and the products that we sell, there's always data there. There's always real data there, real evidence, if you like, of this is how much we've earned doing this. Um, so if you want to have a go at it, here's what you could earn. Do you know what I mean? Um, and then people go off and they have to sort of take responsibility for their own lives and do it their own way and see how they get on. But um, so, yeah, I think potential, like you say, the word potential and the word could, the word what you could achieve um, is perfectly fine, isn't it? It's perfectly fine to put they're, that. They're, they're sort of disarming words. I don't know if that if that's applicable in the legal world, but they are disarming because if you, you know, when you make a claim, an outlandish claim, where basically you say you buy this and you will make this by next weekend, yeah, yes. then that's an outlandish uh, sort of claim. But if you say that, you know, if you buy this product, you put the effort in and you work like I do, follow what I do, then yes, you could potentially have the same rewards as me. Mm. Then you are rewarding it sort of safer. But like you say everybody's different. And that's the thing <clears throat> when it, it, I'm a big believer in um, over the years. It's like I say when we we've been as kids and in society the way we built built up and we've been taught. And I don't know. I'm not going to say when we was at school we were taught to be worker drones and you know and the British Empire used to have these ways of teaching the youth and keeping class systems and stuff like that. As years ago, you were taught that lying was wrong and you was also taught being selfish is wrong. But as we're getting older, we're knowing that actually like things like selfish is not such a bad word as else there is good selfishness and there is bad selfishness and like i say there is good lying and bad lying mm. you know it just it's just lying basically means it's the, you're you're saying something that isn't truthful and that's just right you can read a book out <clears throat> technically that's lying do you know mm. what i mean it's just one of those it just seems so funny that people are so het up about it but um like you say when it when it comes to making claims on sales letters or in marketing, whether people like to admit it or not, unless you're reporting your your rewards or your, your your results or somebody else's results, and it's factual and it's and it's it's recorded, and you know, then that is truthful, that is honest. Mm -hmm. Anything after that, whether it's a projection or you know, it's just you know, it's it's fiction. Yeah, it's fiction. And I'm not. I'm I'm certainly not going to say it's bad lying. It's I recognise the fact that it's uh, it, it's not the truth. And I don't have a problem with it because, as I say, as you said there, you know, you could have like two rules and you know, follow this, do that, press that button, and you know, if that's what someone did to make twenty grand, if someone copies it, can make twenty grand. But there's probably two different people. One person might do it for a couple of hours a day, and then not do it for another few days. There might be one person who spends all twenty four hours going doing it. Their results will be different. So you know, you just you can't say what people will get. Mm. You can say what is potentially achievable, but you have to accept the fact that whoever writes that down, whoever says it, it's still fiction until someone actually does it. So you usually get like on sales letters, you you quite often get like a list of features of a product, and then you'll have to you'll then get a list of benefits. So you could put the two and two together. The features, almost ninety nine percent of the time, they're factual, they're real. Okay, this is things that you're going to get within this product. You know, yep. these features are going to be like this. They're going to help you do that all. You know, whatever you know that's the way it's sort of i don't know packaged and that's the way it's sold the Those benefits are the bits they usually don't sell <laughs> yeah it's not then it's sell. the yeah. benefits is what sells and the benefits is like you said is a gray area because you cannot physically apply them 100 percent to each individual person that's going to buy it so the benefits yeah. might say you know you'll lose some weight or the benefits might say um you'll earn £500 a month. Or the benefits might say, I don't know, you'll make this website in 10 minutes, right? Now, 
that's fine. If that's been that could have been done in order to put this product together, right? Which it may well have been done in order to put that product together. But then, like you say, when a hundred people buy it, those hundred people are going to approach this completely differently, and they may not have the right way of thinking around it. They might not have the right mindset around it. They might completely mess it all up. They might give up after the first week. Therefore, that all of those things will not be achieved. And then does that mean then that it was a, you know, that product that they, that they, you know, because they didn't achieve it, does that mean then that, you know, it was a scam or it was a lie? Or I guess you could say it kind of is, but it's not a scam. Do you know what I mean? Because other people have done it just mm -hmm. because everyone hasn't done it. And um, yeah. So, yeah, so that's that kind of, like you say, that's <clears throat> that's the thing. I mean, like I say, when it comes to uh, projections, People don't, like I say, people don't truly understand it, but a projection is the potential, the possible outcome. Uh, it's a potential. And until it actually happens for each individual person or a person or whatever, up to that point, it's, all, it's a fiction. And mm -hmm. so if it's a fiction, it's not true. And then, so that is the definition of, a, of lying. But like I said, there's good lying and bad lying, and I don't have problems with this. It's just after, I just found it funny that these people was kind of oblivious to the idea that they were generally not telling uh, honest truths while they were trying to say that they were honest people. Uh, and again, it all comes down to sort of perception, isn't it? Nothing, everything's in black and white. It, but it does, it was interesting to see these people do seem to think, like I said, with selfishness and other things, we are taught that this is good, this is bad. And I just think some people haven't really thought about stuff in in good ways and and they're just afraid to be seen as a bad person mm. you know yeah. what i mean and it's uh because selfishness we'll, we'll just deviate a little bit off there <clears throat> i come from a family who often thought i was selfish or maybe tried to make me sound like i was selfish we were taught to be not selfish uh and then if you're not careful you become a, pe a people pleaser and if you do that then you actually don't actually help anyone no you please nobody you yeah. can't help people until you help yourself and you can't help people if you're not happy and you can't be happy if you're not actually spending time doing the things that you want to do in life. Well, and also if you try and please everyone, you end up pleasing no one. That's the other one. Exactly. And like I said, there's just some things that I think are people are taught and they get it fixated in their head. Oh, I can't, I've got to be this, but I can't be that. And, and they don't realize and recognize it. And it's, yeah. And I, I do see honesty as one of those things. Honesty is the best policy when it comes to business. You've got to be transparent. You've got to, you know, we're not talking about scamming people, spamming people, no. trying to take people's money by selling things that aren't real or don't exist. You know, no. but also I mean, we we'll leave time, that to the politicians and the people that are meant to be running the country because they do a pretty good job of that, don't they? <clears throat> I've just seen the latest Jonathan Pye video, and that is just so just yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's just great. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's I mean, that's a great one. I'm gonna have to mention this actually. <clears throat> There's a uh, toy politician who basically advertised on Facebook with a big red banner and he said labor for his name and blah, 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 it was on Facebook. Someone reported it to the electoral commission and it turns out, right. You can be done for lying in business. You know, if you're a business owner, you mm. can't do anything fraudulent. It always has to be honest. Can't make lies, but there is no legislation in British parliament for a politician to say anything that is basically substantialized by facts. As no. part of their electoral Ridiculous. campaign, absolutely. So ridiculous. basically, what that is saying, and this mm. is brilliant, that the people who want to work on our benefits, the ones who are going to govern over us, the ones who tell us we should be honest at all cost, mm. can lie to get our benefits. Yes, do whatever they want. Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't even get me started on that. That's definitely another podcast. We got a general election coming up in the UK, so we yeah. are going to have to do an episode on that because, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we'll wrap it up. <laughs> I think we better stop now because otherwise it's going to get. Um, yeah. All right then. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll leave it at that. And um, yeah. Thanks very much for listening, and we'll speak to you on the next one. Yeah. Thank you very much. Speak to you soon. Goodbye. Thanks for tuning in to the Freedom Hustles podcast. We hope you found inspiration and insights to help fuel your journey towards freedom. Don't forget to join our free newsletter at freedomskillsacademy.com forward slash newsletter, where you can find exclusive tips, updates and resources to help elevate your hustle. Until next time, 
Keep hustling towards your dreams.